The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Quite the overnight session, folks. If you missed it, we were down to 4238 overnight in the S&Ps. Just like that, folks, we've reclaimed 90 nine zero s p points and we've done it all since 6 15 a.m this morning man futures talk about a wild night overnight all the fears of russia oil uh basically getting banned across the board that's sending commodity prices through the roof we had crude hitting staggering prices last night right now to jump into the crude market we're going to kick it off with that crew contract one 3050 on the open last night uh tensions easing a bit 126 was the price at about 1 a.m and just like that we're only up a dollar in the crude market you got s p's only off eight points folks eight points you're talking about we were off 90 points right yeah at least uh nasdaq 100 negative just 20 points you're talking about a 300 point pop from the lows last night we got the dow right now you're talking about the dow trading down 70 points 33,513. we got the russell in positive territory who had the russell in positive territory last night at three in the morning when you were trading at 1948 down two and a half percent you're back above 2000. we jumped to gold 2007 was the price of gold reversing some of those gains gold up nine bucks you see the volatility there i talked about crude we jump over to silver up 10 uh, excuse me down 10 cents after trading up to 26.37 last night you're back to 25.68 and let's jump to notes and bonds you will talk about a reversal man this market no matter where you look folks we're back under 1.8 percent but man you talk about lofty levels let me see where we were last night we're at 1.79 right now the yield in the tenure i'm trying to get the chart up to see exactly uh where we were on that full move it's not going to move quick enough for me i will get what the yields went to um maybe somebody in the tigers den knows uh where we were at probably approaching about 1.7 percent man because we're a full point from 129 to 127 28 right now on the tenure uh we're going to kick it off with one equity before we get into all the geopolitical headlines, it's almost all geopolitical, folks, and it makes sense. Anytime you got uh, commodity prices spiking to where they are, anytime you have oil prices hitting $130 a barrel, folks, we were just at $90 a barrel not that long ago. Uh, but we kick it off with a meme stock, Best Buy. If you had some Best Buy on Friday, you have double that amount on Monday. Best Buy revealed that uh, GameStop uh, Chairman Cohen, who was uh, the one who really started the GameStop mania, he's got a 10% stake in Bed Bath & Beyond, man. The GameStop mania, it doesn't stop for war, folks. Uh, the Reddit stocks continue. And you know what? I think this might be uh, a good plan because Bed Bath & Beyond, uh, they're struggling greatly, as we all know. Uh, but he's got 10% of it. And what he's talking about is basically selling off the company and spinning off uh, buy, buy, baby chain. And maybe that's the most value that you get for the bang for the buck in that company. Not sure how you sell um, Bed Bath & Beyond items. I mean, if I haven't been in one of those stores in a long time, folks. Now, to take a look at the long-term volatility, we put it on a three-year weekly. You're going to open. I mean, look at this. You're going to open at 32, folks. You're going to open pushing almost all-time highs. Now, this is a weekly. You had a couple weeks that got a little crazy, spe specifically January 25th. Uh, but, man, you're pushing some lofty levels, even in the realm of meme stocks, uh, 32 bucks for Bed Bath & Beyond. But I joked, folks, as somebody with a baby in the house, uh, little Tommy, he is now 13 months, just over 13 months old. But, man, there's nothing like going into those baby stores, buying some clothes, trying to uh, find a couple toys or what it be. I joked in our Tiger's Den, very inelastic demand in baby stores when you're buying goods for your children. Uh, so maybe that is the best path forward. But 10%, that's quite a lofty position. Uh, Cohen comes in and the market responds, man. Okay, let's get back to the headlines of the day. 
and we're gonna kick it off with, where was my headline that started? Brent crude jumps above $120. Uh, the market wrap up over at Bloomberg. US considers a ban on the imports of Russian oil due to, of course, the invasion, excuse me. Euro down, dollar rises. Natural gas, metals, almost everything hitting records, folks. This was as of the write-up of last night. Uh, and as you've seen, things have really eased a bit. Now, I know that one of, uh, I believe yet, maybe even the German chancellor coming out today um, and saying that they were not quite ready. That is what started the huge relief. I'll see if I can pull it up and get the exact quote. But that is what started the huge relief. If you pull up the crew contract, that's a weekly. Talk about an acceleration. Put it on a five-minute chart, though, and you see the drop-off, 7 a.m., it really began 123 you're talking about trading basically down seven dollars from where you were at 7 a.m this morning and that's really where the market started to pick off uh, pick up as well uh 6 30 and there's 645 which trading at 4260 you're talking about adding uh quite an acceleration if this is ever an abcd you're talking about 4245 so what's that, about 60 points almost to the upside to 4308 60 points and change you'd have a c point coming at uh, 4286, what, you're talking about 4345 would be the full continuation of there, 4345, that would put the S&Ps up about 20 points on the session, totally feasible for that to happen. All right, what else we got going on, jumping around? Uh, Coles, checking out the headline on Coles. Activist pressure, they plan to open smaller shops and aims to make Sephora a $2 billion business, right? So they have Sephora going on inside the store. Uh, Long-term financial targets for the business, growing sales by low single-digit percentage. Retailers had a big week last week, facing pressure from active, activist investors. And they're going to try and grow its Sephora business to more than $2 billion in annual sales. Uh, yeah, 850 is what they're going to have in their stores, 850 Sephora stores. Right now, they've opened 200 of the Sephora shops in shops inside, and this is how you're gonna see it play out. You cannot support, yeah, here's what Cole said, also said it's on pace to open more than 100 smaller format shops over the next four years. The smaller stores are about 35,000 square feet, all right? Uh, versus 80,000 square feet. You're seeing a whole shift there in a big way. Even at 35,000 feet, they're gonna have to capitalize on that square footage. Um, but at 80,000 feet, they're gonna grow a business within a business. They're gonna have Sephora within that 80,000 square feet. I imagine you're gonna see a lot of businesses if they have that type of square footage imprint to be doing similar action uh, as well. All right, there's almost so much uh, going on, folks. So where do we begin? Uh, but let's jump around and see how some of the FANG stocks are coming up as we come into the first wake. You got Amazon shares. Still going to be down. They're going to open under 2,900. We get the market at 2,912 um, as of the close of Friday. Is that right, 2,912? Yes, 2,912. So barely uh, lower on Amazon. We'll jump over to Apple shares. I mean, look at Apple. Apple claws back $3 and change last night. Every dollar that Apple change uh, trades, folks, you're talking about $16.5 billion in market cap. So that move, you're talking about $50 billion in market cap down and up for Apple shares. We jump over to Microsoft shares, basically flat. They claw it all back. Let's see how Tesla's trading this morning. Uh, Tesla, positive territory, up to $848. We'll jump around folks to feel that Buffett's got quite a position in Oxy and man talk about timing man Buffett he amassed quite a position in this company folks and just look at the last 10 days you go from 38 to 60 in this equity let alone you back it up further than that you're talking about 37 bucks just recently stay tuned folks we'll be right back after the break Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500 plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down 13 points right now. We got the NASDAQ 100, negative 40. Dow off 117. Russell barely back in the red, negative 2. Crude almost back to flat after being up above 130. That's a weekly. You put things on a five minute, you see the pullback to 116.37 up to 130.50. Quite the acceleration indeed. Uh, and when you get into it, I wanted to talk about what I had talked about in terms of the comments from the German Chancellor out there. And I got the comments up here. We're going to pull it up on the Bloomberg updates. Uh, Schultz put the brakes on discussions about imposing restrictions on Russian oil and gas, saying the supplies from Russia are of essential importance to the European economy. Heating, transport, and electricity cannot be secured. Otherwise, the German leader said. So that was quite a strong remark from the German leader out there, basically saying, man, we need heat, we need oil. There's no other way. Uh, it's of essential importance uh, that cannot be secured. Otherwise, talk about being in between a rock and a hard place to put it lightly. Uh, so that causing some easing of the tensions in terms of the pullback. And uh, I don't think uh, many thought you'd see a complete pullback. Pretty remarkable. I'm going to jump around to some of the airlines because, man, they are taking a hit, too. Now, getting over to this, this is what I was continuing down the line here. Uh, airline profit chances evaporate, evaporate as fuel prices surge. Uh, yeah, many airlines they talk about here. Chinese, uh, well, let's let's first go through here. Wiz Air Holdings, they mentioned, okay, uh, they had to reverse a no hedging policy on fuel to protect against further increases on oil that have reached 125. Folks, if you're reversing that and you're hedging right now at 125, at 116 in the price of crude, man, we always talk about it, right? Why weren't these airlines hedging, man? Why weren't they hedging? You know, you, sometimes you got to make bold bets, folks. All right. Think about the the what was at play here when you had crude at such low prices for the period of May all the way through to November, folks. All the way through, you could have hedged some crude for some of these big airlines. Uh, you even could have done it at 60 bucks on almost three occasions in 2021. OK, we're pushing 115. And now they're talking about some airlines are uh so this company, Wizz Air, they're based in Budapest. Uh, they're shifting aircraft to Western Europe. Going to be interesting to see how this shakes out later in the year. Setting up a supply gut this summer that will put down the pressure on ticket prices in Europe. Chinese and U.S. airlines are largely unhedged as 
well, well, you know, you want the you want to reap the benefits of not paying for a hedge. Well, you better be able to take the risk that comes with those added benefits. And guess what? The risk has come uh, come due, to put it lightly. Um, now, let's jump around. This might be, folks, uh, a great opportunity for some of these travel stocks. Maybe this is the pullback. All right. Now, I'm going to put this on a 15 minute. JetBlue gets down to 1281. OK, overnight, we put it back on a longer term chart. The 618 was right at 1249. You're talking about within 30 cents of that area. And that's a full 618, 49. Uh, I don't have any action in these equities yet. I am looking, though. Now, Boeing comes to mind as well. I was looking at Boeing earlier. OK, they've had quite the pullback as well. Uh, maybe a nice area for Boeing here. Now, Boeing, you check this out on a 15 minute. Boeing gets down to 176, folks. Look at that trend line. Okay, we literally bounce almost right off that trend line. Take a look at Boeing. If you're looking to build a position in Boeing for the longer term, uh, probably a nice area to begin a position, folks, when you have. I mean, um, even if the trend is lower, right, we're, we're buying within a downward channel, okay? That's not what you like. But, man, I mean, look at this defined channel. You're talking about going back to March of last year. And look at, I mean, higher, uh, lower lows and lower highs, okay? But an area where we bounced many times on the lower trend line, you could begin a position there. We traded down right to basically that trend line. You're at 180, folks. You were just trading at 223 one month ago. 223 one month ago. And just like that, they're down almost 20% again on Boeing shares. Anyway, interesting lines up right on that channel line. Jumping around to some of the other airlines. I mean, you got international exposure right now. That's a little worrisome, to say the least. Uh, we talked about JetBlue, right? They pulled back to the 618. Well, look at American. American almost back to the 786 of the full run. We jump over to Delta shares. Uh, Delta looking a little bit stronger. Let's see the full pullback here in Delta. We take the COVID lows. Because you got to imagine, right at about the 50% for Delta shares. Uh, United, let's check it out internationally. Yeah, United uh, down at that level. United and American almost look identical in terms of their charts. And we jump to Southwest shares. Let's see how they're trading. Bounces off the 618. 68. Let's see where Southwest got to last night. 39.14. And you see that 618 right on that chart. Um, at least you could have a trading plan, folks. Maybe maybe you're not building an investment position. Maybe you're just trading it. And maybe you make a trade. It gets below that level. You know you're wrong. You get out. Uh, but a lot of these travel stocks, man, you got to imagine when crude hits 130 bucks, right? And these travel stocks are not hedged. And you get the pullback that you just got. If you're looking to get in them, man, I mean, maybe this is the pullback because, boy, that's a daily Check out Southwest, right? From 64 bucks trading at 40 today. Um, remarkable pullbacks. And these companies, folks, okay? Yeah, I don't know how they square $130 oil, okay? But I don't know if it's going to persist to the longer term where these companies are going to struggle to the degree that they are. But guess what? I don't have any positions in them just yet uh, because it's been a max pain situation almost across the board, man, uh, in those travel stocks. But Quite a pullback uh, on some of them, even further than you may have anticipated. But guess what? You're not hedged. You got crude up in. Look at this, though. Uh, crude almost back to flat at 116.43. Yeah, quite the reversal of fortunes in terms of they were dealing with in November, almost December, folks, almost December. And I think it's, it's almost February, right? It's March 7th. Airlines were pricing in $65 crude. They're now pricing in $120 crude, and it's only barely three months later in that index. So yeah, um, in that commodity, yeah, quite uh, quite the reversal of fortunes, to say the least. Indeed. And it's just a lesson, man. I mean, these companies, you know, if you're managing a fleet of planes like that, yeah, it's going to cost you some money during this time. But man, they could have hedged out a few years and some crude locked in some prices there at a good time. Yeah, quite an extended period. And yes, I understand it. You know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Very easy to say. Well, folks, there were times in here that the future was bright. I mean, we got vaccine efficacy in November. You know, you get those numbers and you're an airline, and you get 95% vaccine efficacy, okay? You know the world's not ending. That, that, that data was a reversal of fortune in dramatic fashion. The market accelerated higher. Commodities started accelerating higher. Um, some of these companies should have been paying attention, especially with an inside track uh, on the commodity market with the type of crude that they use in terms of the number just the raw amount of crew that they use. You could have bought it at 40 bucks, priced it out for three to five years or something like that. Nonetheless, we're now sitting at 120. I knew, I know 
Nobody thought crude was going to hit 130 bucks, folks, okay? When we were getting vaccine efficacy numbers barely a year and a half ago at 40 bucks. But guess what? What was your risk reward side of things, okay? Was when we get the vaccine numbers, it's just a lesson. You want to think about these things as you go through life, okay? These executives get paid tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to manage their businesses. They run a business that uses more crude than any of us can comprehend on a daily basis, okay? You got crude stuck at 40 bucks for the better part of six months, okay? And you start getting the indications that guess what? We have vaccines, we're gonna get over this thing, people are gonna be comfortable traveling again, they've been locked up for a while. Feels like, you know, we all kinda knew when we're coming out of this thing, we're gonna wanna travel, right? Maybe it would've made sense to lock in some of those crude prices at 40 bucks for the next few years at least. What were they thinking? The crew goes down to 30 and they benefit? A lesson that you can uh, learn from something from without paying the price some of these companies have in that travel business. Stay tuned, we'll be back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you got the NASDAQ 100 opening in positive territory, just like that. We swing back to the red. Basically, the markets, when you talk about the S&P right now, you're negative 10 points. Uh, we claw back about 90 points, almost from the lows of last night. You get the NASDAQ 100 opens in positive territory, up four points, 13,844. The Dow lagging a bit, off 156 points right now. The Russell, positive by four as well. Bitcoin. 
trading down overnight to just below 38,000, 37,517. Last week, we we're up to 45,000. You're sitting at 39,230. You got Ethereum. 2640 down from 3000 last week you were down about 2489 over in ethereum uh crude market opens basically flat from the close of friday 11614 in crude gold up ten dollars at 1977 as we jump around and we finish it up with notes and bonds negative 19 ticks right now 127.29 uh and we got the 10-year flirting with about 1.79 percent right now the yield on the 10-year 1.79 percent uh the yield on that 10-year all right jumping back to some of the headlines we have going on uh how about two dollars two hundred dollars Folks, we were just at, what, 90 bucks. Feels like a few days ago. We were just at 130 bucks. We're back to 116. Oil traders bet prices will pass $200 a barrel this month. <whistles> okay. Traders piled into options that oil could surge even further after rising to the highest since 28, 2008, with some even placing low-cost bets that futures surpassed $200 before the end of March. Prices to buy call options at higher prices surged Monday as the market assessed the possibility of a supply cutoff from Russia. Now, I'm guessing this changed a bit from when crude was at 130 to the German chancellor coming out and basically saying, we can't do it. We don't have the type of energy to support not buying Russia energy right now. Uh, nonetheless, 1,200 contracts for the option to buy May Brent futures at $200 a barrel traded on Monday, according to Ice Futures Europe data. The options expire March 28th, three days before the contract settles. Um, the price to buy them jumped 152% to $2.39 a barrel. That would make your break even, folks, in the world of options, $202.39 a barrel. Doesn't mean you have to hold them. That's to holding till expiration. Um, but we've seen how sometimes specific contracts can go haywire. Uh, remarkable that you gotta go back that long, folks. Can you believe that it was almost two years ago when we had the crude prices go to negative territory? Now, I don't have negative on this chart because this is a rolling uh, chart for crude futures. I get $6.50 as the low in April, but that one contract, folks, what did it expire at? Negative $38 or something like that. And why did it happen? because nobody had anywhere to put crude. Supply and demand sometimes can really exacerbate certain tracks, and it's gonna be interesting to see what happens, folks, um, with some of the contracts coming up, and that's some of the bets, but you talk about 1,200 contracts at 200 bucks a pop in the price of crude within the next, what, three weeks almost by the end of March? market pricing in some severe volatility in this crude market, and I expect so, um, because just last week, I mean, it's almost, yeah, 87 bucks I got on my chart when I just go back 10 days on a 30 minute. And did I get it? Do I have an eight handle here? No, 906 was the low on February 25th. Uh, yeah, barely a week ago, folks. That was that was not the Friday we just had, the previous Friday, February 25th, 90 bucks. And we're opening, uh, we're up a buck 36 in the price of crude. All right, uh, what else we got going on? Let me see what I got up here. Yeah, gold to copper, I mean, almost everything. I was watching Bloomberg early this morning, so uh, they were talking about there's only a few commodities that are not in backwardation right now. Uh, S&P targets getting slashed. Let's go over this one. Uh, Yardani Research, so they cut it to 4,000. We'll go back to the S&Ps here. We're trading at 4,306. That's quite a haircut, folks. Okay, 300 points um, from where we are right now at 4,306. Now, remember, you're talking about we were just at 4,800. So they're looking for 4,000 in the S&P potentially uh, for 2022. Evercore ISI's Emmanuel sees an outside risk of testing 3670. 3670, we were just at 4,800, but we got a lot of variables lining up right now. Uh, yeah, that would be an 8% drop from right now. They're talking about your Denny Research. You got crude trading higher. Uh, you're going to see more of these, I imagine, folks. Uh, early Bloomberg, they were talking about this as well. Kind of surprised you haven't seen more downward revisions with everything going on with the input prices of crude.
imagine this type of, of for the price to crude with oil or the war volatility going on. Now, I bring that up because what's so interesting, markets turned a little bit negative again on the open, but geez, 20 points, not too dramatic considering where we were overnight. Uh, but what we do get, folks, Thursday, March 10th, CPI data, okay? And next week, we got a Fed meeting. So it's coming right now, regardless of where we are with crude prices and where we are uh, with geopolitical concerns of war going on, we got inflationary data coming out on Thursday. It's going to be especially interesting considering we got non-farm payrolls on Friday and basically no wage gains whatsoever in that economic data. Uh, do we see consumer prices continuing to rise as we see wages not rising? That would not be helpful. Uh, my expectation, though, is unless we see some huge dramatic surprise here, okay, with everything going on, with, with crude spiking to 130 bucks over the weekend, with Analysts now revising and talking about potentially 3,600. Folks, we're at 4,300. That's 700 more points. That would be almost a 1,200-point pullback in the S&P. It'd be about a 25% pullback from the highs. And you want to put it on a chart and see where we are. Let's put it on a five-year weekly, okay? You talk about 3,600, man. We're almost back to where we started off COVID, which was 3,400. That would be quite a wake up. 3,800 to the 382 of the full pullback in the S&Ps right now, uh, sitting pretty right now at 4,307. Doesn't look too dramatic in light of where we've come from. 2,174, you're still, still almost double the price that we were at at the COVID lows, basically less than two years ago. So keep that one in context as well as you think about the potentials for any dramatic pullbacks. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're opening today. Amazon opens barely positive, 29.15 right now. You take a look at Amazon, uh, sitting right at around the 382. Interesting area, Amazon, you found a bit a couple times going back to the last couple of years, uh, kind of the bottom portion of this consolidation area. It's been in basically from June of 2020, which is remarkable. Amazon, though, flat on the session, we'll call it up $9, up three tenths percent. We jump over to Apple shares. Apple up seven tenths percent. There's a pop for you. Apple shares. Uh, let's put in a little shorter term daily to see the action. 164.15 for Apple. We jump over to Google shares. Google negative by about eight tenths percent. And. Uh, we jump to Microsoft. A little bit of negative action as well. Let's see how Tesla's trading today. Good old Tesla, up 2.5%. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps negative by 22. I'll be going over some other equities with action uh, uh, this week. For earnings. I'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. 
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps slipping back into the red right now. S&Ps, a little bit of a reversal, to say the least, man. We just opened at 925. You're trading at 4323, just like that. We give up about 27 points. You're trading at 4296 right now. You get the Dow off 300 points, 33,277. You get the NASDAQ giving up some of those gains it had. It was barely positive. Now you're back about negative uh, half a percent in the NASDAQ 100, just that quick, 13,770. Uh, I talked about we get CPI data on Thursday morning, okay? They'll be looking for 0.8% expected for the month of February. January's number was 0.6%. Be nice to see that easing. Excluding food and energy, this will be an interesting one, what's happening with crude. Uh, probably the Fed may be paying a little bit more attention as they like to, to the core number. Uh, February, 0.5 is expected for that number. 0.6 was in January. So you can see headline number is looking for 0.8% when it was 0.6 in January. The core number is only looking for 0.5% where it was 0.6%. So you had the headline and the core number at 0.6% in January, and now you're seeing a divergence as we have crude prices really taken off. You're talking about headline number, they're looking for 0.8%, and for the core number, 0.5%. Uh, year over year, 7.9% is the expectation. Uh, for the core number, 6.4% is the expectation. This is all Thursday at 8.30 in the morning. They'll be looking for initial jobless claims on Thursday at the same time. Uh, not going to be too important in light of the CPI data, but 220,000 is what they'll be looking for, pretty close to in line with what we've been, we have been getting recently. Excuse me. Okay, we get some retail earnings this week, continuing the run that we've had from last week. We'll kick it off, one of the biggest ones out there. We get Dick's Sporting Goods. I believe they're out with their numbers tomorrow. We take a look at Dick's, up about 7 tenths percent. This stock has performed dramatically well during the pandemic. Quite a pullback from 147 to 110. Now, I believe they are. Let's take a look at this. They sure are. I can already tell, folks, if you're not familiar, right, the one-day market maker expected move, $12.61. That tells you there is an uh, some type of event on the horizon. Our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade, Thinker Swim, Fast Markets, done an outstanding job explaining it a couple times. Anytime, okay, that you get the front month having applied volatility exceeding the next month, okay, that is... It basically tells the system that there is an event going on. The market's priced in about a $12.62 move for their earnings. You jump over to the Analyze tab and then Earnings. Their numbers are out, yes, tomorrow before the bell. Uh, that's quite a lofty move they're looking at in terms of more than about a 10%, maybe even an 11% move for them. After the close tomorrow, one interesting one, Bumble. They're out with their numbers. You're talking about a stock. Come on, cooperate. Apologize. I know it's having a little bit of a delay on my Skype at the end of last session. Uh, Bumble, there's a move for you, folks. How about 20% for their volatility coming into earnings? Uh, they're out with their numbers tomorrow after the bell. Bumble, 
Yeah, it's been a one-way ride on that bumblebee. And I remember that they dropped out of bed big time last time, man, uh, on their earnings. You were trading at 52 the last time they had earnings. You're trading at 17 right now. And, I mean, look at the earnings, right? The first time they announced, you had a little bit of green activity. But, man, they brought the hammer in May of 2021. They brought the hammer again in November of 2021. You had quite the acceleration last week with some of the market action going on as well. And we come into those earnings. 20% market um, implied volatility volatility though for their options coming into earnings there bumble now you jump over just for some context of what we're talking about here you're, t you're talking about a company valued at about 2.2 billion dollars at these prices uh slowly almost giving away unicorn status of 1 billion dollars but not a private company any longer so they'll be out with their numbers tomorrow what we also get uh this week some of them crowdstrike out wednesday we jump over to crowdstrike real quick 176 from 298. Let's see, just out of curiosity, where we are in terms of the full run this thing had, man. Right to the 50%. You're trading at 175. We jump over to the Analyze tab. There's a move for you anytime. More than a 10% implied move into CrowdStrike Wednesday after the bell. Some of the other notable companies this week, we're looking at DocuSign. You talk about a pullback on DocuSign. We jump over to the chart. 315 down to 100, folks. My goodness. Uh, you came into the pandemic at about 91, but important to remember that you traded up from 43 bucks coming into that pandemic. Quite the closeout for, 20, for 2019 for DocuSign. Uh, not many, I'm sure, thought that this company was going to give back all of that. But we talk about market cap wise, still a $20 billion market cap company, DocuSign. And they do have a lot of competitors out there, even if uh, there's no reason to be signing things in person anymore, folks, uh, with the type of technology available to get things done online. So DocuSign, after the close on Thursday, we get Oracle after the close on Thursday as well this week. We jump to Oracle shares. I mean, it's just remarkable, some of the pullbacks. Even if we take the run this thing had from the early part of 2021, started off at about 60 bucks, put a little Fibonacci retracement on here. I mean, you almost give it all back, right? You almost touched the 786. We're flirting with the 618. Oracle shares down to 75 from 106. We jump over. And yeah, not quite the volatility of some of the other growth companies we just pulled up. Oracle looking for about a $5.50 move. Uh, and what is that talking about? That's talking about maybe a 6 7% move implied for their numbers and their numbers. Uh, as I mentioned, yes, Thursday after the close. And we also get Rivian out with their numbers. This will be an interesting one. Uh, it's been a one-way trip for Rivian so far, man. You're down 1.6%. God bless whoever bought this thing at 179.47 back in November, uh, 46.61 coming into their earnings. And yeah, you're going to have some volatility for this company, man. You want to buy defined risk options. How about you pay $7.10 of implied volatility coming in for a stock trading at 46.73. And the other one we get on Thursday, Alta. 368 bucks, and you're looking at about a $31 move for their earnings. You take a look at the chart. Alta, pretty pretty consistent strength here. Up to 422. You've backed off a bit. I'm not even going to put a Fibonacci number on this one, man, because the pullback, it's been marginal. Now, $30, you're talking about an 8% move coming into their numbers. Alta will be out with their numbers uh, after the close on Thursday. So Thursday, going to be a big day for some of the companies, DocuSign, Rivian, Oracle, Alta. We get CrowdStrike on Wednesday. We get Bumble. We get Dick Sporting Goods on Tuesday. And remember, economic-wise, we get that CPI data Thursday morning at 1030. Uh, boy, it's a long time. We got a long time of trading until we reach those CPI data Thursday, man. S&Ps right now. Negative by 40, trading at 42.87. Let's jump down to some of the commodities that have been a little crazy overnight. Uh, remarkable. Crude holding pretty steady right now, right where the close of Friday was, 116.34. Um, not much more you can say about that. Gold contract. My dad's got a new gold report out this morning. If you're thinking about signing up, great time to sign up, folks. I don't have to tell you gold rocking and rolling. You're back up 20 bucks to 1987. Gold hits 2,000 bucks for the first time. In a while, you're talking about going back to, yeah, we haven't gotten there. Is that 2000? Yes, it is. We haven't gotten there basically since the COVID highs in August of 2089. You back this up even further, right? I mean, we're now above. Just so we get things in context here, the high from September of 2011, folks, 1923. You give it all back to what, 1053, man. The run 
in September of 2018, you're sitting at 1,200, you run to 2,089, you put this on a Fibonacci, even the run we had from March of 2020, look at that, right at the 618, not once, but twice. We touched that level in August, and so from there you take off. Just got above 2,000 bucks, 1986. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You want to talk about uh, living and dying on some crude. I got a chart of Oxy, Occidental Petroleum up here. You hit 117.89 back in 2011. You were up as high as, what, 100 in 2008. You were up as high as 87 bucks in 2018. Can't even find the low on this chart. What, eight bucks? No, what are we talking about? Eight bucks, nine bucks, something like that. Uh, up to 58.36. You ended last year at 26 bucks almost was the low in December. I bring it up. Let's take a look at it on a daily just to see the run that we had. Uh, February 28th, folks. Let's just see what day. That is Monday. Okay, so the run really begins Monday, Tuesday. I'm putting these out. Wednesday is March 2nd. Okay, Thursday. Is, is March 3rd, and then you really saw the run from 48 to almost 56. Mr. Ber Mr. Berkshire Hathaway will say Mr. Warren Buffett was in there. Uh, and where are we? Yes, this is the article. Uh, as of Friday, Berkshire owns 91.2 million shares, worth 5.1 billion as of the close at 56.15. 
More than 61 million of the shares now in its portfolio were purchased on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at prices ranging from 47 to 56.45. They ran that thing, man. They were buying 61 million shares, okay, over Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. My guess would be that a lot of those shares were bought on Friday when it traded from 48 to 56, and you did 101 million shares the prior two days. You didn't even do 101 million shares combined, okay? But no matter what, he still was buying from 47 up to 56. Now you're at 58, and he had positions in there. What they go over is that the other 29 million shares were purchased this year on or before Tuesday. They didn't have to publish anything about that because they didn't have 10% of the company, so we're not really sure what prices they paid on the prior 29 million shares. But nonetheless, you're talking about a $5 billion position in Oxy uh, as Mr. Buffett looks to capitalize on rising crude prices. Really interesting when you think about, right? You have Oxy go from 38 to 48, folks, okay? And Buffett says, you know what? I like it at 48. We're gonna buy another 60 million shares over the next few days before things close on Friday. That is a bold bet, but it looks to be paying off. Thanks so much for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man, Basil Chapman. He's live next, live programming all day, folks. It's gonna be a wild one. Have a great Monday, folks.